What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how I take care of my Peperomia obtusa folio. Now this plant does have several different common names that you've probably heard it called by. Uh, the baby rubber tree, uh, and that is in reference to the ficus elastica that it sort of resembles. Although it is not related to the ficus elastica, but it does look similar to a uh, rubber tree plant. So they call this one the baby rubber tree just because it doesn't get too tall. It's also called the pepper face plant because it does resemble pepper nigrum, uh, the true pepper plant, although it's not identical by any means, but it does, again, look similar to that plant, uh, so they call that the pepper-faced plant. Um, and they also call them the radiator plants, uh, and that is in reference to a horticulturalist uh, way back when that actually said that they do really well on top of radiators because they enjoy kind of hot, air. Uh, I do not recommend putting yours on top of a radiator, uh, but they are found in the kind of rainforest of Central and South America. Uh, so if you think about that, you think, oh, the humidity and a little bit of light, kind of dry, humid air, but hot. Uh, and that did give way to the common name, the radiator plant. This is a great plant to have. I love this plant. Uh, it is very easy to take care of, very simple, doesn't get too fussy. You can go on vacation for a week and forget about it and come back and he's probably going to be just fine. Uh, and they are non-toxic. Uh, and that's the great thing about the Peperomia family. None of them are toxic and I believe they comprise a genus of around a thousand up to about 1500. So none of them are toxic, although if you do have a cat or a dog or a bird that does like to nibble on plants, they could get a little bit of a stomach ache, but they are non-toxic, so it shouldn't kill anybody. Now, as I said, these plants really don't get too tall. I think they max out at about 12 inches to about 12 inches. So about a foot tall to a foot wide. Uh, and they're considered more tabletop plants. You don't have to worry about delegating too much space for these guys uh, because they are more compact and bushy uh, but they don't get too tall or too wide. Now as I said they are native to around the tropics, you know, the, the rainforest, uh, so they do like their humidity. I know the average home is anywhere from about 10 to 15 percent, maybe on up to about 20 and that's being a little generous. Uh, but my house is about 40, anywhere from about 40 on up to 60, 65, 70 percent humidity. Uh, depending on what season it is and how my hair is doing, they do enjoy some humidity. Now they can take a little bit of dry air in their environment, but I wouldn't recommend keeping it really bone dry. Although I do have some uh, friends that are down south that say that they do really well in their environments, but I know down south is a little bit humid as well, so that may help them. Uh, but I've heard growers say that they actually grow kind of well in like the desert environment, as long as they keep a humidifier going a little bit. Uh, so they can take a really wide range of humidity, um, but I keep my house at about 40, 45 to 50%. And I think that is where it's really comfortable. I usually do not miss this plant, although the leaves attract dirt like no other. Uh, they are on the succulent side of the spectrum. They are not succulents at all, but uh, with their leaves, they do store a decent amount of water in their stems and leaves, uh, and their leaves are more on the succulent side of the spectrum. Uh, so they do attract a good amount of dirt, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and spray him off to make sure he looked his best uh, for his debut. But uh, you may have to get in here uh, and just kind of hose it off to make sure that you don't see any kind of dirt sticking to the leaves uh, and make sure that you don't see any kind of pests in here either. Now, I don't really recommend getting in here and wiping it down with a micro cloth like I usually tell you to do with most of your other plants just because it doesn't take a whole lot to snap any of these leaves off and do some damage. Now, that being said, if you do snap a branch or even a leaf off, they propagate really easily. So you could take anything that does snap off and stick it in water. Some say you can even stick it in dirt uh, and they'll begin to root. Although I've never had any kind of success 
breaking a leaf off and sticking it in the dirt with the peperomias, but uh, you can stick, certainly stick it in water and have it produce roots relatively easy. So don't throw away anything that does fall off uh, because you can get another plant out of it. Now, with light on these guys, um, you think, you know, the tropics, the rainforest, they probably get a decent amount of light. Uh, this guy is pretty much an epiphyte, uh, so he does kind of grow under the canopy in nature. Now, he'll get some bright indirect light, but nothing direct that kind of really comes down to his leaves for far too long. Now, I said this guy, I have him in the grow room on the other side of the house, uh, and he's in an east exposure and he'll get ample morning light and then kind of protection from the sun during the hotter part of the day. Then I'll kind of hit him with some artificial grow lights later on through the day so that he gets the right amount of light that he needs. So I wouldn't recommend setting him in a north window just because he doesn't get too much light there. And if you do stick them there, they can kind of actually start to die back and drastically slow down their growth. Uh, because if they don't get too much light, it will kind of kill the plant. I had a plant before this one and it didn't get too much light. I believe I had it kind of like in the northern exposure. Uh, and the plant lasted for about a year before it finally just kind of died back and said enough's enough. Uh, but I have this one in the east exposure and he seems to be doing just fine there. You got to be careful too because if they get too much direct sunlight, you can scorch the leaves. It will begin to take on almost a variegation kind of pattern. Uh, but it'll just be a scorch mark from the direct sunlight that could kind of come in and pelt these leaves. And if you don't check it quick enough, it could end up killing your plant if left into the exposure for quite some time. Watering is another important factor with this plant as well. These guys can succumb to root rot really quick. Uh, again, you think the tropics, the rainforest, they get a decent amount of water, don't they? Well, most of these are growing in trees and they're absorbing a lot of their water through the humidity and the air around them. Now, that's not to say that they don't get a lot of water, but they also get a lot of heat and evaporation. Uh, but in your house, you don't get that direct sunlight or that evaporation that naturally occurs in the environment. So if you give them too much water, they will succumb to root rot and their roots will begin to dry and have a fungal infestation and then you'll kill your plant. Say hi, Willow. She's very curious and like I said, she loves this plant. And that's why I have him in a terracotta pot also. Like I said, terracotta is very porous and it will help wick any large amount of water away from the roots and the soil. Now, if you do have a saucer underneath there, try to empty your saucer after about 20 minutes because that's really all about the plant is going to absorb in its roots. And if you leave the saucer under there or if you don't have a drainage hole in the bottom of your pot, your plant will die really quickly. They do not like standing in saturated soil and having their feet soaked all day. So just make sure that the uh, excess water is able to drain away freely and your plant will be just fine. In between waterings though, always let the soil dry out completely before you begin to water again. Uh, now use your finger and kind of check it down in there and if you feel like there is moisture, wait a couple of days before you add more water down in there. If you stick your finger down in there and you don't feel any kind of moisture, and I mean stick it down to like the, at least the first or the second knuckle, if you don't feel any moisture at all, it's probably okay to go ahead and water your plant. Now you can also kind of give a little squeeze to your leaves and if they feel a little turgid, not like they're gonna snap, they're okay, but if they're really weak and bendy and you're able to kind of manipulate them a little bit, they probably do need a little bit of water. Now be careful, because like I said, it doesn't take too much to actually snap a leaf off or do any damage. So you're just kind of wanting to apply a little bit of pressure just to kind of see if the plant's got enough give in each leaf. Now I watered him yesterday or the day before, and I gave him about two to three cups of water, and that was okay for him. And as I was saying, you really want to kind of pay attention to your environment and your home. There's not a lot of heat in your home, and there is a little bit of humidity, uh, especially if you're in a house like mine and you've got thousands of plants everywhere. Uh, and if you have your plants grouped together, there is a decent amount of humidity kind of given off to each other. And I also keep a humidifier in place. So if you have the humidifier and you have the air going, then you have to actually <coughs> monitor your plant because too much water along with too much humidity 
will actually kill your plant. And then if you're not giving it enough and you're only relying on humidity, your plant's not gonna actually thrive like it's supposed to. So there are several different factors to consider whenever choosing how much water to water your plants. Now, these little rat tails that are coming in right here are the Peperomias flowers. If you're not really kind of paying attention, it does look like a new leaf might be getting ready to unfurl, but that is the Peperomia obtusifolias flowers. And like I said, they're known more for their foliage than their flowers. Uh, but it is cool to see them flower indoors. Typically, only healthy, happy plants flower, so to see those is a good sign. Now, feeding your peperomia shouldn't be too hard. I only feed mine about once a month, and I dilute it back about about half, and I find that uh, a liquid, reputable, all-purpose fertilizer does well. And like I said, I dilute it back by about half. And when I transplanted him, I sprinkled a little bit of worm compost, and then a little bit of coca core, a little bit of perlite, and some of the miracle Grow moisture, con moisture control soil. You want something that has a little bit of nutrients into it, but doesn't hang on to water too long. Typically, a lot of growers would want to go the route of cacti and succulent soil, but I find that that's a little bit too harsh. It may work for you and your environment, uh, but like I said, I went the route of the miracle Grow uh, moisture control, sprinkled with a little bit of coca core, a little bit of perlite, and some worm compost to actually help him out. And I think it's done him really well. Like I said, he's flowering, he seems happy, he's putting on a lot of mass and new growth, and the growth habits of this plant are rather quick. He's not a huge, super fast grower, but he has put on a decent amount of mass this growing season, and I do think it is because of the worm compost and the soil that I've made for him, and the right amount of light and humidity helps as well. Now, if you don't have the right amount of light and humidity, like I said, they are kind of marketed as a lower light plant, but they will not produce a whole lot of growth quickly. Uh, and if you're not giving it enough light at all, it can kill your plant and it will die back. And then if you're not giving it enough humidity, you'll notice that the leaf tips and the edges will start to brown and get crispy and unsightly too. Now, when talking about pests, these guys really don't have too much in the way of pests. I believe just the average houseplant pest, spider mites, white flies, mealybugs can be an issue with the peperomias, uh, though I've never seen one on this plant. Uh, but they can be a little bit tricky or a little bit hard to deal with with diseases. Most of that really is just from root rot and not enough sunlight or not enough fertilizer. So if you lightly fertilize your plant at least once a month, then you're okay. Uh, and if you're watching the water and making sure you're not watering it too much and letting the soil dry out in between, your plant will be just fine as well. They are very easy plants to propagate, uh, but you've got to be careful because uh, some peperomias can be infected and they appear healthy, but if you take too many cuttings, you can actually have a problem. And that disease is called peperomia ring spot. So you may have a plant that appears otherwise healthy, uh, but if you take too many cuttings of that plant, you can actually have problems with that and face some serious dieback or even lose your plant. Another thing I wanted to mention is the soil pH. They're not too particular when it comes to the soil pH. They can really kind of thrive anywhere from slightly acidic on up to neutral. So anywhere from about 6.1, 6.2 to 6.3 on up to about 7, maybe 7.4 is okay. Uh, and your peperomias will do fine with that as well. All right, now the only other thing I wanted to mention about this plant is the cleanliness. Like I said earlier, the leaves do attract dirt. They are kind of a magnet for dust and soil and anything else out there in the air. So uh, about every other month or so, I will stick my peperomia in the shower and spray them off and go over and under every leaf and make sure I get in there really well uh, because it wouldn't take long for any kind of pest or disease or anything of that nature to set up shop and then infest your plant before too long. So always make sure you give your peperomias a bath about every other month or every other two or three months uh, just to kind of knock anything off and make sure you're cleaning the leaves so they're able to photosynthesize the right way. And as always I wanted to thank my Patreon subscribers. I wanted to give a special shout out to my top tier tree patron, Thin. Thank you. And then a special shout out to everyone else who's donated. If you do have any plant questions or want to get a hold of me directly or just want to support my channel, Patreon would be the best way to do that. I'm often bogged down by messages, comments, and emails. 
Well, guys, this has been Justin reminding you that if you can, go out and plant a tree. And while you're at it, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know what's your favorite pepperoni of. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know any time that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.